low quality fans of a high quality Bruins team that got a little less high quality. Just a little bit. That's not a dub. This just can't be a dub. There's just no way this is a dub. Guys, it's been a couple days, and I have been trying to come to terms with what it means for the team. But for us personally as Bruins fans, it's a massive loss to announce that David Krejci has officially retired after 17 years of being a Bruin. 17. Drafted 63rd overall in 2004. Wow. I've got my onesie on. I don't want to zip it up all the way because my heart is broken just like the bee. First and foremost, hell of a career. And we should just say, good for him. Uh, I have not seen really any he screwed the team or anything like that. I really, really haven't. I've seen little jokes about like, couldn't have told us before free agency and all that stuff, but I haven't seen anyone be like actually serious, serious about it. Um, and that's, that's, that's good. He deserves all the respect in the world. He's been one of the most underappreciated, if not the most underappreciated Boston athlete of all time. Uh, I mean, I think Tuca's in that conversation too, but wherever you land on that, you land on that. But if Patrice Bergeron is our Superman, then David Krejci was our Batman, right? He was the guy who just had to work harder than everybody else. Still had that amazing talent, though. He always performed well. For years, we talked about him struggling without great wingers, but he was still putting up numbers. Still really good defensively. I, you just... What's the flaw with this guy? Right? I mean, sure, he's not a super superstar. But he was a Bruin through and through. He led our team in postseason points, goals, and game winners in 2011 to win us the Cup. He led everybody in that, I should say. He did everything he really could have as a Bruin. You wish he had another cup. I really hope we're not saying that about Bergie in a couple of years. But that's a career you can look back on and just go, fuck yeah, man. Good for you. I didn't think I'd be this sad. I really didn't. I appreciated Krejci, I thought. Uh, I was always on his side. I didn't think... Not having him around was really going to hit that hard. And I just look at the team and it just feels different. It feels a lot different. It took him almost three years to crack the roster for the Bruins. Drafted in 2004, first game was in 2007, and two minutes into his playing time in that game, he was concussed. He really didn't become a regular until a year later. And even then, he was bouncing up and down. And then in 2009, he wins a seventh player award. And then the rest is history, and he becomes an absolute lock on the roster. Playoff Krejci, every time we make the playoffs, is just... He's just a guy you love to root for. He's quiet and just gets it done. He's our Batman. He was our Batman. Maybe not as dark and edgy, but he was our Batman. You know his 42 playoff goals is ranked 7th for the Boston Bruins all time? Fuck, that guy's good. This is really just a casual goodbye. I don't have a lot to say about this more so than anyone would. That being said, here's a question for you. Do you put his name in the rafters? Has he deserved to get his number retired? I have seen a lot of, uh, a lot of opinions on that, and I am very much on the fence. I have in the past said no. Now I'm in my feelings, so it feels like I'm saying yes. But that doesn't always mean that's the right answer. So let me hear your takes in the comments. Let me know what you think the Bruins should do with his number. Now, also let me know what you think we should do about the second center role. All right, let's talk about the team. I think there's about four options. First of all, there is the Dvorak conversation. 
The Bruins have been linked to a Dvorak trade with the Coyotes for a couple weeks now. Those rumors have died down. They picked back up once Krejci announced his retirement. I do not think that deal gets done. It's starting to look like it doesn't really work. That being said, I don't know how much better Dvorak as a 2C would be over Coyle if he has a healthy year over the committee approach that we're going to talk about. So I'm not really in on the Dvorak option. Another option, Eichel. Guys, it doesn't work. We have a million dollars in cap space. We have talked about Tuca potentially coming back. There are trades we can make that would open up some cap space, the DeBrusque, John Moore, Wagner contracts, but two of those names cost more to move. Like you don't get anything back. You usually have to send something with them to get them to take the contract. And Eichel already is going to cast it cost out the butthole just unbelievable amounts. There's a lot of conversations about Eichel. None of them make sense. It just doesn't work. And that's a bummer. If I'm the Bruins organization, though, I look at that situation and go, well, Eichel could force his way here in a year and we get him a much cheaper price and we know a better better idea about the next situation. I know you don't want to kill a year of, a, of an open window for a cup, but it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to go for him. I just don't think it works. So I'm out on Eichel. Stanika and Beecher, I'm lumping these together because they're very similar situations. Beecher is simply not ready, but he is the one with the highest ceiling of our center prospects. He's coming off a shoulder surgery last year. Shouldn't be anything to worry about with future development. He needs another year uh, at Michigan before he's going to be coming up. Stanika might be ready. I think he makes the team this year. I really do. Even looking at the depth that we signed on, I think he makes a real push. I wouldn't be afraid of starting him in that 2C role and just seeing what happens. First couple of weeks of the season, just just give the guy some time up there and see what happens. I am higher on Stanika than most. I'm in, though. I'm ready. Let's give it a ride. Let's see what happens. Lastly, the committee approach. Foligno, Hala, Coyle. Don't love it. It's the most likely scenario. Again, down to a million in cap space. The team seems to be comfortable going, we'll still be in the playoff mix. Let's wait till the trade deadline to see if we need to make a push. This year, the Bruins might be banking on more of a defensive approach. Sort of like the Habs last year. Whereas, yeah, we don't have that middle one-two punch. But we have a bunch of very good defensive forwards depth-wise. It's not as much fun, but if we're winning games, I'm having a good time. It's also frustrating, though, because obviously Hall resigns. We're finally excited about a second line that can really outshine pretty much any other second line in the league. And then Krejci retires. It's just a tough look. It's a tough look. But again, good for Krejci. The replacement's tough. It's a tough conversation. I want to start with Stud. That's what I want to do, is I want to start with Stud Nika at that 2C Let's just see what happens. As I already mentioned, it's a casual video. A lot of these off-season ones are. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Nailed it. We are two away from that magical 69. And we continue to grow in the off-season, which is crazy to me. But, like, we're still bumping those numbers up. We're creeping towards 300. Like, damn, guys. Anyway, thank you to everyone who's supporting. But let's talk about something kind of funny. So Kasha and Richie have just signed with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And a lot of thoughts on that. But we'll keep it simple. Kasha, good for him. One year, 1.25 million. I hope he has a great season. I really do. I hope Toronto loses in the first round again. I hope Kasha has a great season. I just want that kid to be happy and healthy. Because you can't help but feel for him at a certain point. Richie, though. Richie is a funny circumstance. Now, what I'm about to say is not bragging. It's probably closer to pathetic than anything. I watch... 100% of Bruins hockey every year. All of it. I usually end up watching games over again. So I'm like 120% Bruins hockey. I watch a shit ton of other teams. 
there's probably another five or six teams that I watch the majority of their games. Then you get to that middle area where I watch some, and then you get to that low area where I'm pretty much only watching you if you're playing one of the other teams that I'm watching a lot of. I watch a lot of hockey, guys. Terrible at the sport, but love it. I should just say I'm terrible at skating. I'm half decent at the other hockey portions. I say all this to explain that I've watched reactions to the Richie signing by Leafs fans. I've read social media posts about it. I've read articles about it. And it's a great reminder, and it's a reminder for all of us, that if you don't watch a guy every day, you can be bamboozled very easily by some numbers. A lot of these opinions are by people who are a lot smarter than me. But they're talking about what a good pickup this is and, and how he's going to really open up things for them and all of this stuff. And if you watched 100% of Bruins hockey last year, you know that he started really hot, got a good amount of goals on the number one power play unit, and then completely fell off a cliff. He was a negative on 5v5. He was dropping farther and farther down the, down the lines. And in the playoffs, he was non-existent. I just, he just is not the player that people think he is, in my opinion. And again, these people, smarter than I am. But when they're citing the points, but they're not talking about the situations, it's a great reminder for all of us that maybe when arguing with someone who watches 100% of that team, we should take a step back and find the details of why they think that about a player. Look, maybe he does great for them. Maybe he does open up their power play a little bit because their power play was a lacking come playoff time. But I've always thought he was kind of soft in front of the net. He'll get there, but he doesn't do much there. And he's pretty easy to remove. So... Best of luck, Richie. Again, you're a Toronto Maple Leaf, so I hope you get zero points. I hope the whole team goes 0-82. But best of luck. As a human, I want you to be happy. All right, guys, it does it for me. We are shooting another podcast tomorrow. I know we had about a week off. Uh, it, basically, the boys were on vacation. They were out in Cape Cod doing their thing, and I'm, I was stuck indoors, not doing anything fun. So what are you going to do? But we got a podcast that we're recording tomorrow, hopefully getting it out a little later in the week. Guys, it's going to be a doozy. We're going over everything that's happened in the past week and a half. It's probably going to be a long one, but come on. You got car rides and stuff. You got to listen to something during it. All right, guys. Go be. <laughs>